Jack, that three-minute stretch from the kill on the bench, um, again, another lineup kind of put together with the injuries. They wrote a push it to a 10-point lead. What does that say about not just the depth, but again, just this group kind of like, again, the chemistry of this group kind of finding a way to get it done? It was interesting. You know, we mixed the teams in preseason and in training camp, and uh, for some reason, it's coming back to, to you know, be a positive for us. Uh, I talked about that to our coaching staff. You know, sometimes you don't do that. You get your first and your second team, and you let them play together to try to form chemistry. We we saw the the positive in this group that different lineups could be out there and different guys could fit into the system. And it happened tonight. Mikhail needed a break. He wasn't going to be able to run the whole 12, so he needed a break. He was tired. Uh, and then for that group, Lonnie, Dennis, Trent Wofford, uh, Doe was out there. Royce was out there. Dayron gave us great minutes tonight. It, it is why I like doing this, man, like uh, to, to get a bunch of dudes together to try to have a common goal and, and be unselfish on a nightly basis and try to get a win together and compete harder than the dude in front of you. That's the greatest part of team sports right there. Lonnie with 21 points tonight. I mean, this is a guy who came in on a minimum signing and you're giving him the ball in the fourth quarter to run offense for a large stretch there. Can you just talk about what he's been able to do this whole season and the luxury of having a guy like that who you can give the ball to and trust to create in those yeah, situations? Yeah, definitely, Eric. Someone that, uh, for me, I, I've... Uh you know, seen him from afar, uh, great acquisition uh, for us this offseason. And uh, I'm just going, growing to trust him more and more. Uh, you, you're spot on. We drew up uh, after timeout plays for him. We also uh, ran pick and roll for him, specifically at the end of the game, uh, just because a lot of times he's going to have a favorable, uh, favorable matchup. And um, uh, he's making the right decisions, whether it's the reads of getting to the rim, getting fouled, scoring off the bounce. Uh, he has the ability to do all that. Now, I'm going to keep addressing the defensive end, helping us rebound, coming to box out, uh, being in the right position. So uh, we'll keep coaching him, but he's done a heck of a job. Uh, what did you think of uh, the tempo with Ben out, and what did you think of your half-court offense maybe having to rely on it a bit more without him? Yeah, this was going to be an interesting, uh, I don't know, collision of styles tonight just because they wanted to play extremely slow. That's just how they play. You saw the other night versus the Knicks, what that score was at the end of the game. So uh, we were really trying to push tempo early. Um, weren't very effective doing that. Uh, I think overall we can grow in that area that make or miss with or without Ben, we have to push the basketball. This half-court style of basketball is a tough way for us to live. Uh, we want to stay away from that. And uh, uh, we've accomplished a lot of things. Like the other night we had five turnovers because some of our sequences are one and two passes, good looks, and you don't give yourself a chance to have a turnover. Uh, so the mix of being able to execute when we are in the half court, but the favorable part of getting out and running transition, that's number one priority for us. And what did you kind of think of Los Angeles as, as they're bringing Harden into the fold? How did you think they look tonight as they're kind of, I guess, putting those pieces together? Yeah, second game for those guys. Uh, you see the talent and... Um, um, they're going to figure it out, like I said before the game. They have a, a coach who's uh, done it before at a high level. Um, they'll have a lot of pieces they can put out on the floor at different times of the game, different lineups. No Plumlee tonight also, so he's a dynamic big for them. Um, that's a good ball club. Coach, 45 points for the bench. You kind of touched on it already, but how? what's your impression of um, how ready that second unit has been to start the season. Yeah, and you take a, a guy like Trenton Wofford who practiced earlier and then played in tonight's game. And so a guy who has dedicated himself and the entire bench has to keeping themselves ready, whether that's extra work on days off, whether that is doing uh, extra conditioning after the game when they haven't played, the professionalism that we're trying to create and the standard that we're trying to create uh, hopefully allows these guys to excel when they get their opportunity. We talked about it from the beginning of the year. Every guy will get a chance to play this year, without a doubt. That's just the way I coach. I believe in it. I believe in being a part of a team, and you get rewarded for that. Some nice is going to go well for you like it did for that group tonight, and you give them a lot of credit. Jack, I think we talked earlier about you guys not being a team that forces a lot of turnovers, but that fourth quarter, that's kind of what fueled you guys' rally a little bit. What maybe changed where you guys were able to just kind of, you know, create those turnovers? It, I'm literally talking about, we talked for like 35 minutes before the game about how can we can create more turnovers and uh, where we ranked that turnovers and what was the difference and what happened and who we play against. And uh, 
but it's been stressful for me on my mind thinking about how we can create it. Overall tonight, our guys were just more aggressive. They just they just reacted. They just did it. Didn't worry about if it was going to be a mistake. And that's where you get to if you're going to create turnovers. There's a level of risk that you have to take. I told Mikhail he had the best risk-taking play. He ended up getting a, a turnover uh, in the game. And it's that commitment to do it over and over again. Um, but it's, it's some risk involved, and I don't mind. I'm a risk taker. Last one, Brian. Uh, well, he says last one. I was going to make this twofold. Go give me uh, a twofold, Brian. Go ahead. <laughs> last one, twofold. With, uh, you weren't going to be up in the 20s anyway with fast break points without Ben. So considering how half court it got, how important were Day Day's minutes? I think he scored nine in the fourth quarter. Yeah. He had both free throws yeah. in the run that put you ahead. Just how important were those minutes that he gave you? Yeah, huge minutes because, um, you know, th there's a, a time in the game where I have to make a choice. Do I come back with Doe? Uh, and then I'm toggling between what Ty Lue's doing, if he's going to react, if I take, you know, there's a little gamemanship going on at the time. So I thought we could stay big at that time and hopefully offensive rebound just because that could help us in the, in the half court. And Day Day did what he does best. He can rebound the basketball. He finished... Uh, plays, which is great for him. He's grown in that area. And then the free throw piece, just, just uh, give him a lot of credit for working on that. But his ability to rebound for us, we'll have to lean into that at different points of the year. Tonight, we toggle back and forth between uh, playing small and big, and uh, he continues to put it on my mind why we should play big sometimes. Did you see the play where Cam got hurt? I, I had did PJ? not see it on, uh, but I asked the other assistant coaches, and I heard he did step on the foot. Yeah.